through my makeup routine this morning as you're here so i'm washed i'm toned with elemis ginger spray toner which is lovely i love that one it lasts for ages mine lasts me about seven months so i only have two maximum within the space of a year and my moisturizing cream i'm alternating each morning at the moment depending on how my skin feels and, and what i fancy so my three favorites at the moment are the Body Shop's Oils of Life, which is an intensely revitalising cream. So it is very silky and quite thick. But if my skin's feeling a bit dry, that's the one I go for. I have another one that I don't try to use too often because it's expensive, but it's lovely. It's the Elemis Pro Collagen Definition Day Cream. So that looks lovely and makes your skin quite glowy. Again, it's, it's, it's not as thick as the Oils of Life but it's really silky. So you get, and it smells lovely, you get um, a very nice base for makeup with that actually. And I was thinking about using that today, but I think I'm going to use my Elemis Superfood. So this has a prebiotic in, prebiotic day cream. And what I really love about this is the smell. It's a little pump action. Again, it's quite creamy quite thick but it does blend in quite nicely but it smells mm, very nice and luxurious and spa like and I'm trying to think what it does smell like um kind of herby not flowery but it's really nice and once it's on sinks in really quick so you get a good level of moisturizer but it's not greasy doesn't feel heavy it's dried in straight away and I think gives quite a good base for your makeup so I'm gonna open my makeup bag now Mala will be in it any moment so one of my previous videos you saw my makeup bag a bit because I had to give it a good sort out didn't we a bit of a clean Need to get a new mirror. Mine's broken. I've had this for years. So, you know, make do and mend sometimes. These are my brushes. These are by Oscar Charles. Had them ages. Wash them every couple of months. Probably should do it more than that. But I do like to apply all my makeup predominantly with brushes. Just think you get a more even look. And I've got various foundations, but today I'm going to use my Estee Lauder Double Wear. This has an SPF 10 in it. So, I did use it a lot throughout the summer um, and this is a slightly darker colour so I'm trying to use it up because I've still got some colour from the summer. As I go into the winter I'll probably go down a couple of shades. I've got this one I sometimes use, A Lasting Performance by Max Factor. That's in a warm almond so it's lighter than this one. And I also quite like this Clarins Everlasting Youth Fluid. And that's lighter again. So that's that's really my winter one. But we're going to stick with Estee Lauder. Again, it's got a nice little pump action, which is easy to use. And then I dot it everywhere. Oh, excuse me. Suddenly got a oh, runny nose. There we go. And then once I've dotted it round, I use a foundation blending brush. My mirror, sorry, you're too far away for me to see. I'm getting old, you say. So that just gets blended all over. Go beyond the neck, sorry, the jawline, so that it's all blended in. Making sure you get a nice even coverage over the eye sockets because that gives you a base for your eye makeup to sit on, which makes your makeup last longer throughout the day without it sliding off. Do use my fingers sometimes a little bit for my nose just to blend that in. Do you know my nose has changed shape. Is that because I'm getting older? Does anybody else notice that? My nose used to be really little and <laughs> I don't know just seems to have got bigger on the end. 
Is that because I'm nosy? Am I turning into Pinocchio? God, hope not. I certainly like to keep it real. I'm not telling you any lies. Anyway, I digress. So it's quite simple and quite light. It actually gives you quite a thick coverage, this does, but I've just got a very light layer on. So don't need too much. As I say, I've still got quite a colour from the sun, which has stuck around quite well this year, actually. Maybe that's the coconut oil I put on. Who knows? Now I've got two concealers on the go at the moment. Again, one of them is a Clarins. It's the Everlasting Concealer. And when I bought this, I bought it in replacement of one of their other concealers that I used to love and I think has been discontinued and I can't get it. And this is quite light, so I need to use it sparingly, uh, especially at the moment with, with a bit of colour. And the other ones I like are the Maybelline um, Instant anti-age eraser. They come in a multitude of colours and it has a little twist top. The product comes up and out onto this brush and then you can just dab it where you want to. That's nice. The only thing I find with that is sometimes it goes a little bit cakey in my wrinkles, in my old age wrinkles. There's the Clarins one. It's a little bit smoother. I'm going to use this today even though it's quite light. So I need a bit of blending and I'm going to use the tiniest bit that's going to go under my eyes. Predominantly, I put it in the outer section to begin with, like that. And then when there's not much left on my finger, inside, still got these black bits here from being a bit tired still and a bit poorly last week. And if you use your little finger, you don't press too hard because the skin under the eyes is really thin and sensitive and if you use a larger finger you can rub it too much. And then I go back to my foundation brush and I just blend the outer side of the eye and down onto the highest part of my cheekbone so it blends in. And the same on this side. And then with a concealer brush, a little one like this, I then blend to those dark bits. And then I put a little bit on the side of my nostrils there that are going a little bit pink there. So there we go, blend it all in up to the eye and then the nostril. I'm not going to bother today, but what you can do as well is to make yourself have a bit of a natural facelift. Get a little bit older. You put a little bit here and here. Imagine you're the Joker in Batman. Blend it in well. It gives you a bit of a natural facelift. So, so that's my base. Very basic, but it'll do me for today, weekday. And before I put any colour or anything else on my face, I do my eyes first because... I was once taught that if you put your skin foundation on and your powder if you use it and then your blusher, then do your makeup. You'll probably find that you've got too much blusher on or too much colour. Whereas if you make all the colour that you want to make in your eyes, then the rest is just enhancing and touching and you shouldn't put too much blusher on. I don't know how accurate that is, but it's a um, routine I've always kept with. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do my eyes next. I'm using, at the moment, a combination of this I got in Primark a couple of weeks ago, you might remember. It's the Smolder Eyeshadow Palette. It's five pounds and it's got a selection of smoky silvers, greys. It's got some metallics that I'm not using yet. Um, you can see the ones I am using, the most popular ones. This is my base at the moment. So I'm using the creams and the browns and a little bit of smoky charcoal out of that. But I also use this Rimmel's Magnify Eyes Blush Edition palette. And again, this is nudes and browns, really. So I've got some nice autumnal colours in there. And I open that every day as well because that one comes with a little applicator. But the Primark one doesn't. So that's going to be useful in a minute. <coughs> 
So back to my makeup brushes. I then use this fluffy brush. It's got a bit of eyeshadow on from yesterday actually. I haven't washed these for a few days. So, and then I'm using the beigeist colour out of the palette to make the base of my eye colours. So that's going to be my neutral natural base. And I've got I don't know whether I've got unusually coloured eyes, but I've got blue and green eyes. <laughs> okay, so my eyes are a type of blue, but depending on my makeup and lighting, they can either look vivid blue or they can look turquoise and look a bit green. But my eye colour changes a lot. I know some people's do and some people's don't, but... Grace, my daughter, she's got very hazel eyes. They're very dark. And my son, Adam, he's got blue eyes. So there is a lot of blue eyes in our family. But mine seem to change. OK, now we're going to go on to a bit of definition. So I'm going to use this slanted brush. Well, this is where Myla gets interested. She's playing with the brushes. <laughs> and I'm going for the brownest colour. You don't need too much, otherwise you can end up looking a bit clown-like. So I put a bit on the brush and then I just dab a bit on my towel I've got here. Just to sort of not put too much on too quick. And then I'm going to go to the crease of my eye. And very lightly just make a rounded shape here in the crease there. Now you should really go a little bit higher than the crease so that you don't look like you've got eyes that are true droopy, especially as you're getting older, but it just enhances that area there. So I try to keep my eye open when I do it, so I know I'm going just above the crease. And that just gives a little bit of definition. Just might need a little bit more on that one. And then I go in with my eyeliner. Ow, 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 fire. <laughs> so, I'm using, no, I'm not, I'm using that one. Okay, Glimmer Sticks by Avon. Love Avon's eyeliners. Lots of matte ones and glimmer sticky ones with a bit of shine in. But they're retractable. You can wind them up like this, wind them down and really soft so you don't get that horrible dragging feeling like you do with some pencils. So I really like Avon's eyeliners and I just go along the lash line at the top, not too thick and I don't go out too far because if it goes too far and again as you're getting older it can make the eyes look like they're drooping down unless you do a big flick up. I've never been very good at that for some reason so I just sort of Enhance the the lash line a little. Can I see the that going too far to the edges? And it doesn't matter if they're not looking exactly the same, um, because what I then do is can either use like a soft brush to blend it or what I then do is I put a little bit of powder on to take away the, the too much of a dark line but it also mats down the eyeliner stops it from coming off so I'm just using a little bit of the whitest powder on a flat sponge brush to just go over the eyeliner I've just done and because it's white a little bit of white onto the lid which makes the eye look more awake and bigger don't put glittery eyeshadow here that will make you look older but on the lid it's fine opens up the eye a bit you see so that's that one I'll do this one Again, 
cover the eyeliner and then onto the lid blending all the time like that so it's still looking pretty natural there's nothing too out there with this makeup i'm then going to do my charcoal -y sections so i'm actually going to use the darkest one on here which they call midnight again sponge brush the other side for the dark color it's going to take a very little tiny amount pat it on my towel just so it's not too dark and there's not going to be any dark powder dripping off onto my face and then I go to the outer edges where the eyeliner finished and come in with a half moon into the lid so it's just making the corners darker like that again you don't have to be too exact do the other side because the key to all of this is blending and I'm not great at doing makeup to be honest and this is what I've just adapted to suit me I suppose so one of my Oscar Charles brushes this one's a smaller fluffy version of the powder I used on the base of my eyes and with that I go into the dark section I go into the dark and I start to blend that into the middle, into the brow that's here. And that gives a bit of definition and a bit of lift as well. Like so. so it all gets blended. You don't have to be exact, just blend it all together. And that then is my basic eye, back with my concealer brush, I then just go under the eye and pull any makeup that's gone a bit too far to the edge off and out. And that way you actually do get a bit of a natural flick there and it lifts your eye so it's not drooping in the corner and making you look older than you really are. So that's the basic eye and then I use eyeliner again and it's quite sunny today so I'm feeling I don't want to be too dark sometimes I go back to a glimmer sticks I have got black and brown and glimmer sticks as well the one I've used today is a grey but I'm not going to do grey underneath the eye because it can be a bit harsh and again eyeliner underneath the eye can sometimes be a bit aging but I'm going to use a little bit of blue which some of you might say that's very 1980s Polly, but I am going to use a bit of blue because it brings out the blue of my eyes. And um, as I say, it's nice and bright and sunny outside today. So I want to sort of look a bit, not summery, but just a bit sort of not dull. Again, this is a retractable one. This is Rimmel's Exaggerate. Again, like the Avon one, really soft and silky. So I just put a very, very thin line of blue and I actually put it on the water line I know lots of makeup artists say so you shouldn't do that but I do I don't think there's any rules with makeup really just do what you like <laughs> do what you think looks good and do what makes you happy is what I say so I'm just going to put that on both sides water line like this so it's not too much too much but just enough to make my eyes look a bit more bluer than they naturally are and then eyebrows now I don't particularly like my eyebrows at the moment and I haven't had them done for ages because the salon that I would normally go to unfortunately a few well, it's a few months ago now I was going to say weeks it's not it's a few months ago the shop next door had a fire and it burnt their premises down and it burnt the salon down as well so they've gone and it was really convenient because it was right by work and I really love the lady that works there I've known her years and I just haven't got round to finding somewhere else to go to have my eyebrows done so they've been quite neglected 
I'm not in great shape at the moment. I'm not very good at doing them myself. I don't know why. So, but I, <coughs> excuse me, let me just sort my towel, let's sort this towel out. It's coming off. That's better. So I'd normally have them waxed and tinted, so they haven't been tinted for ages. I could try it myself, but you know, I've never done it. I've never tinted my own eyebrows. My daughter does it all the time. She's 18, she's been doing it for years, but I've never done it. Perhaps I should. But anyway, in the meantime, till I decide what I'm doing with my eyebrows, I do need to just put a bit of colour on them because they are very blonde. And I swing between putting, where's my, uh, there we are. Again, by Avon, I have a brow sculpting pencil, not a pencil, it's quite soft. And if you see, it's got like a square edge to it. And it is for brow sculpting. I'm going to use that today. And sometimes I just use, there's my eyebrow brush at the end of there. You can see there's a slanted brush. I sometimes just put a bit of powder on that and define the eyebrows with that if we don't want too much. But I'm going to use my brow sculpting today. So give the hairs a bit of a brush first. I mean, they're not too bad, but they're just not the shape I want, really. And then I'm super careful with this because I don't want them too dark. I don't want them to look fake. I don't think there's anything wrong with fake ones, but just not for me. And then there's a few little spots where I've got hair missing. I don't know why that is. My used to make my beautician laugh. She kind of got gaps in really funny places. So I try to have a good look at where those gaps are and just fill them in very carefully with little light strokes just so it doesn't go too dark and then I try to define the shape a little bit without going too overboard so and I think my eyebrows are a little bit I think I've plucked them a little bit too far in so there is some hair just here, but it's very fine. But that certainly is probably better shaped now than the other. Just defines it a bit more without being too over the top. So I'll just do the other one and Again, if you can be a bit patient and just do it really lightly, because if you go in too hard, too quick, like anything in life, go in too hard, too quick, it could fail. Or you're more likely to fail. <laughs> oh, I think that's a good theory. So, oh, we're getting there. Getting there. Just try and match these up. much as possible yeah so I've noticed my eyebrows being a bit all over the shop recently but I'm sure it wouldn't take much effort for me to just ring up another salon and find somebody decent I'm sure there's loads of people about so that'll do that's all I need to do then we move on to the colour on my face. So as you can see, I still have some colour left from the summer. So I'm going to use a bit of bronzing powder, but this one isn't too shiny, but I don't think they make it anymore. I can't seem to find it. I've got an Avon order coming later today with a new blush ring, because I've nearly finished this. And I'm hoping it's kind of an equivalent, but I can't get this and I'm really cheesed off about it. It's called the Glow Bronzing Powder in a Light Bronze by Avon True. But rather than it being sort of shimmery, whilst it's a bronzer, you probably can't see there's not much left. It's really matte. But it gives a really lovely coverage. I just hope the one that's coming later is going to be similar because I've really enjoyed wearing this. 
And for this, I actually use a big powder brush and put lots on, and tap the excess off. And then I just very slowly and carefully just build up a little colour on my cheekbones. You can suck your lips in while you do that. <laughs> Tiny bit on the end of my nose, chin and forehead. Blend in going up the cheekbones here. I have got quite high cheekbones actually, um, which I'm quite lucky. It's quite quite nice apparently. Lots of people have often commented, oh you've got lovely high cheekbones. My ex-partner used to say, hasn't she got lovely cheekbones? <laughs> It wasn't very nice about anything else, but there you go. Um, and then, just to finish off on the apple of my cheeks, I use a bit more of a pinky colour, just to look awake, refreshed, and and like I've been in the in the chilly wind, just to sort of look a bit brighter. And at the moment, I'm using Rimmel's Maxi Blush Powder Blush, and this is in 001 Third Base, quite pink. Excuse me, I have a runny nose. I don't know why. No. And then with a smaller brush, big smile, and I just put it on the apple of my cheeks. Little bit up, little bit up. And that is my basic day to day makeup. That's pretty much what I do every day to go to work. I haven't done my mascara yet. Um, and it's, you know, if I was going out of an evening, I'd probably do something different. But this is my day-to-day -day makeup. And then I set all that with a mist. My favourite is Max Factor's Lasting Performance Setting Spray. Just give you all day setting. My makeup will still look like this at 10 o'clock tonight. It's fab. And you just need to spray it over your finished makeup look. But I always do it before my mascara so that my mascara doesn't run. That sets everything in place. It smells nice as well. And it doesn't irritate my eyes. And I wear contact lenses and I've got very sensitive eyes. It doesn't irritate or anything. Just while that's drying on my face, I use that moment to put my makeup away. Oh, Myla, she's sitting on the makeup bag. So I put all those away. Put my brushes away. And then, it's time for mascara. Now, mascara is a funny one, isn't it? I've gone through lots of different mascaras over the years and one of my ultimate favourites for many years, I've still got some and I still use it, is the Max Factor 2000 Calorie. Um, excuse me, a lovely product, great brush, easy application. And I sometimes get it in black and I sometimes get it in brown, black. And this has been going for years and years and years. I honestly, I've bought this for at least 25 years, if not longer. I might try that today. I don't know. But my favourite at the moment that I've been using every day is Maybelline's um, Sensational Sky High Lash Sensational. This one here. I've been getting mine off Amazon because... Everywhere keeps running out, but you can get it in boots. Um, really nice long brush, gives you really, 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 really big lashes. So that's quite nice and dramatic. That's the brush for the 2000 calorie. But I'm going to stick with Maybelline today. And I don't know, and I don't care whether it's <laughs> right or wrong. Some people say you should just pull the lashes up like this to get the colour on and if you twiddle it about like this then you're covering the top ones as well as the bottom ones. It could very well be true but I'm a bit more of a painter um, of mascara so just what I'm used to. So I tend to paint the lashes up, sometimes give them a little bit of a wiggle to separate the hairs or what have you, and I don't tend to do the top at all. I just paint from underneath and space out the lashes to my liking, like that. Got a little stray one there. 
that's okay. And then on the other side, I really have really, really long eyelashes. You can't see them without mascara because they're so blonde, but they are really long. I do have them tinted from time to time, but again, it's normally my lady at the salon that I've been going to for years that did them, and obviously she's not at work at the moment. It's an awful fire. It's dreadful. Um, so a big insurance job going on there, and the work. I mean, it's probably well, it's months ago when it happened, and I don't think work started on fixing it yet. I think they've had a real battle with it, and... Fortunately, nobody was hurt, thank God. There was nobody there at the time, happened in the middle of the night. But it was drastic, hectic, it was awful. But it could have been so much worse. So, there's my top lashes done. And I do do the bottom ones, but quite lightly. Just flicking a little bit of mascara on to define them. I can hear Lenny crying outside. I don't know if you can hear it, but I know what that means. It means that feral cat's about. Oh, I'm going to have to go and rescue him in a second. Can you hear that? I mean, Lenny's pretty good at standing up for himself. He just doesn't like it when he comes. He won't be in the garden. But Lenny's on the fence looking out because he can see him he'll start shouting at him anywho i've got a different makeup bag with my lipsticks in because i carry my lipsticks around with me during the day okay i'm going to sort the cats out and come straight back to you huh. okay panic over cats are sorted it wasn't lenny it was albert with that feral cat that i've talked to you before about talked to you about before and I think that's where the poorly poor came in last week because Albert had been bitten by something. I think he'd been in a fight with him. Just ran up the stairs, sorry. <sighs> Give me a minute. Ah, right, back in the room. Ah, crikey, three story house keeps you fit. So, mas uh, I'm done mascara, lips. I have that many lipsticks and lip glosses. Actually, I want to count how many lipsticks I've got. There's <laughs> just in my daily makeup bag that comes around with me wherever I go, and it's got lipstick in and a few painkillers and spare contact lenses and anything you might need in the day. Ladies' things. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> 12 different lipsticks in there. I don't really need to be carrying 12 lipsticks around with me every day, do I? But I do tend to swap about colours. There's a fair few lip liners as well. Lip liners, I choose any brand, just go for the colour that I like. But I do like uh, Maybelline's The One. Again, that's a retractable lip liner. It's nice and soft and that's quite bright. Oh, I might use that today. I feel like I'm in a bright mood. Um, Lisa Armstrong's very nice. They're pencils, but they're quite soft. Thing with those is the colour stays on all day. Really good. Loving number seven is retractable at the moment. And this is a very sort of purpley shade for me. I don't know really purples. I like creamy coloured light lipstick or almost very pink. I don't do bright reds generally. Sometimes I do a dark red, but not bright fire engine red. But what should I have today? Um, okay, I'm gonna start with the the one lip liner. Let's go a little bit brighter today. And I always do the bottom first. Don't go right to the corners. Then I blow a kiss and that gives you the start of the line for your top but it doesn't get the heart shape. So all I do then is fill in 
the heart shape at the top. And that's my basic lip liner. You can then put a little bit extra on a lip lining pencil, blend that in, and that helps to stain the lips, which will keep all your lipstick on longer throughout the day. I can't talk and do this at the same time. That's my lips stained and with liner on. And I'm really a fan of L'Oreal's lipsticks at the moment, these ones. They are very matte. They stay on, yeah, they're called oh, Colour Rich Ultra Matte. They stay on long, long, long time. I have one, this is one that someone used today, one of my favourites. So it's like a, a pink yeah it, it's like um it's like a rose color really pinky rose color and then i sometimes put a lighter one on the top just to make it a little bit softer in color and i like this one called no cliche but it's nearly finished and i've looked for a couple of weeks to get that one i can't get it at the moment so i got this one instead but it's a bit darker in Sainsbury's the other day and it's okay but it's a bit browner than the other ones it's a bit darker it's fine that will do the job until I can get the other one so put a bit of this one this is called rose miller but I've lost the writing on the label so I don't know exactly what it's called I'll have to find that out and just apply and sometimes don't bother with the brush and I like to fill in like that. It's matte but soft so it doesn't make your lips dry. It keeps your lips really well nourished but you don't get the gloss finish. So that's that's good. I've never known that in a lipstick before actually. Sometimes they're either really moisturising and they're off within 20 seconds and they're glossy. But I've never known a matte lipstick be so moist, it's lovely. But I'm going to put a little bit of the cooler colour just on as well. Onto my brush. And I'm just going to blend that in in the middle bit, just for definition. And there you have my pretty much day-to-day -day makeup, which is nothing expert, but you know, it's um, it's what I do. Yeah, it's what I do every day, basically, unless I'm going out somewhere special, and then I perhaps might have some other ideas depending on what I'm wearing and what have you, but. I've never had my makeup done professionally, actually. I'd love to do that. Um, I've got friends that work in television and obviously their makeup's done beautifully um, whenever they're presenting on television and what have you. And I look at them and I think, oh, who's done your makeup today? It looks great. I'd love to have that done. You never know one day. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm going to put some moisturiser on, get dressed, dry my hair, and then it's time to take mother. Shopping. Thank you.